President of Waikou says she doesn't understand why government doesn't recognize, realize, and respect the unions. Prime Minister gives a synopsis of the challenges the island is currently facing. But first up, Minister of Finance says there are misconceptions and people are being misinformed. Those are the headlines for Friday, May the 29th, 2020. This is SSM Daily News. I'm Valerie from Britain. Thank you so much for joining me this evening. And as usual, we have a packed newscast for you, so let's get started. In our first story, Minister of Finance, the Honorable Ardwell Edion, said in a press statement issued last evening that the counterproposal presented to government by unions on Thursday hits of demands as opposed to suggestions. The union's counterproposal for cost-cutting measures will be thoroughly reviewed this week, he said, noting that a brief perusal of the document hints that there might be demands as opposed to suggestions. For example, the proposal is requesting government to initiate implementation of an economic stimulus plan by July the 1st, 2020, and increase the fees for director's licenses from 500 guilders to 1,000 guilders. Things are tough right now, and the conditions set by the Netherlands are undesirable given our vulnerable position after Hurricane Irma. But we will do what we must to take care of all of our people. We have to find a way together because we are in this together. Regarding the vacation cuts, the uniform cuts, the travel cuts, and the overtime cuts, the minister said there are misconceptions even today, and he realized that many people are being misinformed. He elaborates further. So there was a misconception even today at the, the I want to call it a strike, the walk-in, since the, they walked into the government building. Uh, I realized that a lot of persons are either being misinformed or haven't gotten the proposals that we sent to the unions. Because the main thing is, uh, what was said today was, don't cut my salary, not my salary. Actually, I even had another uh, proposal that came in and said that we are cutting 12.5% of salaries for a certain amount, and then every uh, scale you're in, we're going to cut another trader, another increment. So there are all types of misinformation going around, and I want to clarify again, our current proposal on the table does not cut salaries of civil servants. It's 50% vacation pay in 2020 and 50% vacation pay in 2021. We also include overtime, uniforms, and zeroed out travel. That is the proposal on the table right now. I have seen briefly the counter proposal from the union, which does not take into consideration anything that, or any, con any condition from the Netherlands except for the fact that they would like to have a negotiation on 50% of COLA, which I have never seen a number to that. I don't know what that cost is, uh, or even if the entitlement is legal at the moment, not me as Minister of Finance. Minister Edion said he appreciated the phone calls, emails, and direct conversations with civil servants and teachers on the matter, noting that they have given him more insight and motivation to find solutions that have the least impact on the people during an already trying time. And in other news at this time, Prime Minister of St. Martin, the Honorable Sylvia Jacobs, addressing the current position of the island on the talk show Prime Minister Talks, gives a synopsis of the challenges the island is currently facing. I mean, as much as we feel horrible to have to ask our civil servants to assist. Um, the position St. Martin is in isn't because of the four ministers, the seven ministers, or even the parliament that is sitting today. It is from years and years and years of situations not fixing things in time. This government has taken a stand that we will fix things, but now you're being told fix them by July 1st or else. Um, at the end of the stick, um, the Dutch are our only avenue to loan funds at the moment. It's a loan, it's not a gift, it's not free money, whereby in the past you could have said you got a grant. The only thing that we can consider a grant up until now is 
the medical assistance we've gotten after COVID or during COVID and the military assistance that we've gotten. So in that respect, St. Martin was between a rock and a hard place. And all we're saying is we're trying to help those persons in the private sector who don't have an income and who, if we do not help, would be out on the streets. That would spell disaster for St. Martin, even if we open up our external borders in a day, in two days, in two weeks, in a month. We still were looking also at the fact that we're going into a slow season. Where does the money come from? Where does the money come from to pay the civil servants? Where does the money come from to pay the subsidies for schools, for sports facilities and all that? It comes from what government gets in taxes. Nobody likes that word. We have to also find a way to generate more funds to be able to meet more of our own needs. We want to stand on our own, but that means responsibility across the board. So all we're asking, as we can feel for our brothers and sisters who have nothing, we want to have that those who have help chip in. Now, we did not initially, or the, the um, when you hear 12 and a half percent, some say, oh, they want to come at our salaries. Our Minister of Finance and the Council of Ministers said, we stay away from the salaries as much as possible. As possible. So because the statement was, let's look at your, your personnel costs, and based on our LMA, we were able to find some funds within our budget that don't necessarily fall in that bracket, but they are personnel costs. The cost we spend on uniforms, the cost we spend on that other thing you mentioned, Minister. But at the okay. end of the day, okay. we rely on our salaries to get around. Those people out there have no salary or half a salary or whatever the case is, a decreased salary, the ones we are trying to help. And as we continue with SXM Daily News for this evening, Minister of Romi, the Honorable Ekba Doran, also speaking on the program, The Prime Minister Talks, addressed the issue of sending the correct message out there. He said that a lot of people and civil servants are being misinformed. Well, um, basically, the Minister of Finance touched on most of the points, and we need to emphasize and send the message out there, the correct message out there, because, I mean, Based on information that I've been getting as well, it seems to be um, that a lot of people are being misinformed. A lot of civil servants are being misinformed. And right now we are going through some trying times. It's around the world. It's not only a Samaritan thing. I mean, Hurricane Irma and Maria were more of a Samaritan thing and we received help from our neighbors. But right now everyone is feeling a pinch. And if everyone is feeling a pinch, we have to be able to take that $1 and split it up between every one of our inhabitants. Um, although, as a minister, I'm not only responsible for the civil servants, I'm responsible for every individual on our island. So therefore, I have to see to it, and we have to figure it out, as they would say, that everybody gets a piece of the pie and are able to survive. I mean, these trying times are not going to last forever, and we cannot look at it one-sided and say, you know, the, the private sector needs to figure it out, because our income as a government has been on a monthly basis between 40 to 45 million gillers. And right now we are chopped in almost one third of that. So all our income comes from the private sector. So if it can be that we are in line with the private sector when it's convenient to us, but we also have to keep them in consideration as well when moving forward, when executing the SSRP and all those different things, because everybody has to eat. And as a representative of the people, I believe that that message should be sent out there even louder. We, if it was up to me or any one of my colleagues, we wouldn't cut anything. If we were in good circumstance, we wouldn't cut anything. If we could have given extra, we wouldn't even given extra. Um, after Hurricane Irma, everybody received a, a voice cut. The option was there. Anybody, every civil servant had the option to receive a, a advance payment and all those different things. So we cannot forget the good things during the bad times. We have to prepare now and how they would say, suck salt a bit in order to move this country forward. And I believe that, not I believe, I know that good times are ahead, but we have to hold one head and, and, and do not let our brothers and sisters in the private sector suffer, but stand in solidarity with them as well. And we are doing our best, the Minister of Finance, the Prime mm -hmm. Minister, my other colleague ministers, they're working very hard. We are all working hard in order to bring us back to where we need to be, but we need all hands on deck. And still to come, Minister of Justice disappointed by decision to maintain strikes at prison. We'll have the details of that story and much more 
when SXM Daily News returns. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. As we continue now with more news, President of the Windward Islands Chamber of Labor Unions, Claire Elshot, who, along with other union leaders, met with the Council of Ministers on Thursday, May the 28th at 6 p.m. to discuss the counter-proposals. Mrs. Elshot said, as unions, we all realize the responsibilities of government. But what she doesn't understand, however, why the government doesn't realize, respect, and recognize the unions. She spoke to our news department. As unions, we all realize the responsibility of government. We don't understand why the government do not respect, realize, and recognize the responsibility of the union. The union has their task cut out, and our objection is from day one, when this um, pandemic hit us, we could have seen that it was not only going to be a health issue. It is going to be a social and an economic issue also because you're going to get the effects. From day one, our Prime Minister instituted EOC3, EOC EOC4, EOC5, EOC6, EOC7. They have never sat with the unions or call the representatives, the presidents of the unions to have a meeting. Therefore, we are now faced with a situation at the 11th hour when Holland imposed a number of cost-cutting measures to the COM to be able to get the 29 million that have to come after the 1st of July, we are now, government is only looking at, I need to have that money. As a union, I'm saying, when we started out, the need of this country and the effects of COVID-19, we needed a budget of 245 million, according to the Minister of Finance. Holland is given, or they give 24 already, and 20 million too, which probably lead to 44, and they're going to give 29 more, that would bring you to 73 million, okay? Um, I don't know how their negotiations went, but to me, the budget of 2020 was already ratified when COVID really took the center page here. So to me, we should have handled this, or our government should have handled this as a COVID budget, and it should have been submitted to the Netherlands as the COVID pandemic budget, not as a liquidity support. In any case, now the pressure is being put on the unions for civil servants, and in addition from that, they're not saying everything in one, but we already heard in the meeting from Friday that the private sector also will get cuts. Do you cut into people just like that? We have had a number of meetings as unions with our members. We understand our members' source, their cuts. 
that they have, the, the type of, how you would say, the, the hurts that they have, financial, social, and economical. Because St. Martin is one island, and no matter how you turn it or twist it, you have single parents, you have grandparents out there working to help take care of their grandchildren, and you have husband and wife, um, let's say pay, um, pairs, couples, of which one falls short of whatever in the workforce. Now, all of these things, if you put them on a row, we are now, as unions, civil servant unions, being pressured with the time frame that is given to our government to come up with counter-proposals. Yesterday, after delivering the lift letter by 3 o'clock, we delivered as unions because we want to keep it separate. One is the WICLU with all private and public sector, but the proposals of the public sector, which is the civil servants and teachers, those proposals we delivered by 3 o'clock. They didn't have media, we didn't, um, our members, we didn't find it necessary that they had to go back because we delivered those to the CCSU and they are the ones that then channel it to the government. We were also, at that time I noted, we were also invited to a meeting from 6 to 7.30. That meeting from 6 to 7.30 lasted up to after 11 last night. The whole crux of the meeting is our proposals had deadlines that they had to, um, how you would say, comply with. And they found it was difficult. We were pressuring them. But our proposals, some of them are what interpret as demands and not proposals. We are a union. So I don't know what else a union would come with in their proposal than demands. But the fact of the matter is that if the COM, the, um, the, the, the ministers are saying that those deadlines are unattainable, okay, we remove the deadlines, they're willing to start the dialogue with, with certain things, etc. But we have to get the proposal today by 12 o'clock in writing and then to go back to our members. And by Monday, we would have a, a definite answer for them. I cannot, I cannot honestly say, I would sell it to my members, I would say what has been said in the meeting, and I would then try to get, I would refrain from explaining all the commotions that went down and the, the reprimandations that went down, of course, because that would not be relevant. We are in a dialogue and we are trying to reach two measures that will be able to be achievable. And as we continue now, the Minister of Justice, Anna Richardson, held an emergency meeting with the management team of the prison and her legal advisors on Wednesday last, May the 27th, concerning the recent incidents that took place at the prison. With regards to the narrative that is being pushed in the media as it relates to the prison facilities and the recent incidents, the minister finds this very unbalanced. The current state of the detention facilities on St. Martin has been a source of concern both locally and internationally for a number of years, especially following the damage caused by the 2017 hurricane season. It is no secret that a structured, structural solution to bring the facilities up to par is needed. However, it is unfair to paint a picture that the Ministry of Justice and, by extension, the government is not actively working to improve the conditions, not only for inmates, but for employees as well. Being incarcerated is never a pleasure. However, it is unwarranted to assume that government is not doing its part to improve the circumstances surrounding incarceration. Being one of the minister's top priorities, diligent work is carried out daily by the minister to take the necessary steps to remedy the conditions at the prison. In collaboration with the Ministry of Romi, meetings and site visits have taken place to actively develop plans to construct a new facility. 
In connection with the aforementioned plan, the Minister of Justice has presented a proposal to the Council of Ministers for its approval, which will subsequently be presented to the Parliament of St. Martin to secure the necessary support. After having received this support, the Minister will engage with all the relevant stakeholders to ensure their input and contributions, and Phase 1 of the Action Plan will be put into motion, the release reads in part. Now turning to our weather forecast for May the 29th, 2020 and the weekend. Despite the presence of a mid to upper level trough, a stable Saharan dust filled air mass has settled over the Caribbean islands. This will suppress most of the shower activity throughout the forecast period. Slight to moderate seas are expected through the next few days. Outlook through Sunday midday, fair to partly cloudy and hazy. Now, let's turn to your three-day forecast. And still to come, Councilman of the MJP says he is not enthusiastic about the lifting of the border. We'll have the details of that story and more with SXM Daily News Returns. Make use of web mobile banking with easy access and direct usage of face recognition. Pen code. Or fingerprint. Download web mobile banking app and make your transaction from anywhere at any time. For more information, visit web-bank.net forward slash quick dash login. And as we continue now, this item out of French St. Martin, the Prefecture announced on Monday that the lifting of border controls to the French side will take place on Tuesday, June the 2nd, providing the health situation of the territory continues to remain stable and all conditions are met. In its release, the prefecture said that the stable health situation permits it to proceed to the next phase of exiting lockdown on June the 2nd. Beaches have all been reopened and non-motorized water sport activities have been authorized. An increasing number of classes have also returned to school under strict sanitary conditions. From June the 2nd, professional sailing and other nautical activities will be permitted to resume the Memorandum of Understanding, the MOU, in the sanitary field that is being finalized between St. Martin and St. Martin. PJD2's news department contacted the leader of the MJP, Councilman Louis Mussington, and discussed that subject with him. I'm not at all enthusiastic about the announcement of the, the, the lifting of the control at the border. I think that uh, the, 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 the prefect with her, in her high-handed approach, has tried in her own way to, to humiliate, to disregard the concerns of the people of this country. And I think that it's an unacceptable what she has done to us in the name of trying to keep us safe and to keep us protected. Mm. The, the Sunday when the, the, the authorities in the South felt that it was necessary to lift uh, the, the control because there was no raison d'être, there was no justification to maintain the control. Uh, if the, the, the prefect was really genuinely concerned about us, she would have done the same. But of course, she had to prove and demonstrate, flex her muscles to let, let us know that she's in charge and things would go according to her watch, according to her agenda, and no, uh, no one else would be allowed to dictate you know, or her behavior. I condemn that attitude because, like I said, it's not about our safety and our, and our protection, but it's more to prove that she's the boss. That's how I interpret her, her behavior because there was no justification for it. The, the, the figures on both sides were very encouraging, and I thank God for that, that he protects and, and covers this country, uh, you know, with his grace and mercy. Um, the prefect, to me, ignore the fact that you know, we are a, sister, a twin sister uh, island, 
and that we are, you know, we are a, a, uni, a unified country, even though they like to talk about Prince Island and that side. Uh, but we are, a one, we are one people, and our destiny is tied up together. Mm. Whatever affects one directly affects the other side indirectly. And this has been a tradition uh, for, for um, um, 10 years. Over the years, we have learned to live and support one another. And to me, this tradition has to be preserved and maintained at all costs. She failed to understand that. She failed to accept that because she came at our agenda to divide and rule, divide and conquer. And we must not run away from that interpretation of the situation. That's what is going on right now in our country. And I, like I said, I stand to the fact, to the view that uh, we, we must not allow that to continue. There's no justification for it, therefore it must not continue. To those who want to say with enthusiasm, hey, this, finally she's going to lift it, I say no. Her attitude has to be condemned. And as a matter of fact, I have made an approach with a, with a, with a legal expert, with a lawyer in, in Guadalupe, I'm waiting on his response, to see how we can challenge in the court of law the, 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 the order, we call Arité Prefectoral, that was uh, written to effect on the 15th of April of 2020. Mm -hmm. I want to challenge that before court on the principle that uh, they, she violated Article 6311 of, of, of our organic law, and beyond that, she threatened or she, 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 she tampered with our, our culture and the South heritage as a country, as a people of this land. So, yes, once my lawyer gave me the Okay, we will go ahead with it and challenge it. Challenge that the approach in the administrative court. Again, like I said, I'm very much furious and upset with the whole behavior because it's, it, it's clearly, out, it's quite obvious that it's not about the, the corona uh, virus. It's about she establishing full control and showing her full powers over this country. And still to come, phase three of the economic reopening plan on Dutch St. Martin begins on Monday, June the 1st. We'll have the details of that story when SXM Daily News returns. And as we end this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening, as the island continues with the economic reopening plan, in addition to those businesses that are already allowed to operate, the following services may now resume as of Monday, June the 1st, from Monday to Friday between 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Phase three of the reopening plan from Monday, June the 1st includes dental clinics, restaurants, dine-in, other retail stores, recreational activities except bars, nightclubs, and dance establishments, community councils and NGOs, foundations, associations, etc., laundromats for public use, freight and courier services, taxis, T's and G's at 50% capacity, car rentals, remaining educational institutes, barbershops, hair and nail salons, religious services, and weddings, and maritime services. You are reminded that all businesses and services must implement the mandatory guidelines of the COVID-19 prevention and safety plan for the business community of St. Martin and have their operational plans in place prior to reopening. The general public is also advised and reminded to exercise proper social distancing and hygiene. And with that, everyone, we've come to the end of the news for this evening. I'm Valerie Van Putten, and just a reminder that this and other programs are available online. Simply log on to sinmartinmediacenter.com for viewing. And on behalf of SXM Daily News team, we thank you for watching. Enjoy your weekend, and we plan on meeting you right back here again on Monday. <music>